your mother. Now listen to this. Once upon a time, there was a wily wolf. That's me. A wicked witch. And a ginormous giant. These three villains earned their reputation in a selection of folk tales set in the dark woods, deep lakes, and enchanted castles. In this story, our villains are the wily wolf and the cunning fox. Once upon a time, there was a king who had an extravagant taste in clothes. He had for many years employed a little tailor to come up with even more outrageous costumes. But the little tailor's latest effort had not pleased the king. Little tailor, you are the sex. Furthermore, considering I dress like an emperor, I shall call myself Emperor. So the Emperor of the World at Islington would only go for walks in order to show off his clothes. One day, two dodgy characters came to the town and put it around that the cloth they made was the most magnificent in the world. Not only was it colorful, they said, but magic as well. Clothes made from it were invisible to stupid people. They had tested this theory out on the giant with spectacular results. Fee, boy, bo, bam. The Emperor was very curious and excited by the claims of the swindlers and invited them to the palace. I should like a suit of such cloth. That way I'll find out who in my cabinet is stupid and who is wise. To emphasize how stupid he was, he gave the wolf and fox a huge bag of gold each as an advance on royalties and a room in the palace to set up their looms. Oh, now listen, indeed. We need some fine silks. Oh, and some gold thread. You can't make a silk voice out of a sow's ear. Of course, said the emperor, impatient for the rogues to get on with their work. Soon, their shuttles were flying across the looms, but there was no cloth to be seen. Have you taught what you'll do with used gold? I'll buy a chicken farm, and when I've eaten that, I'll buy another chicken farm. The wolf, whose business acumen was the stuff of legend, asked the fox how he would spend his gold. That's it now. I'll put it in the bank, then get a job on your farm as a night watchman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, the emperor was getting impatient to see some results. I'll send my faithful prime minister to see the weavers. He's a clever man, I suppose. So the old politician entered the weaving room. Morning, morning, but was amazed to find he could see nothing, only empty looms. Is my eyesight this bad? 
Look at the work that's gone into that. I'm not a fool, surely. Prime Ministers are never fools. Well, what do you think, Prime Minister? The Prime Minister was not about to admit he was an idiot. It's wonderful, really. Really wonderful. Such needlework. Such hemming! Indeed, I shall tell the Emperor the good news. I'm dying. Now then, uh, before you die, will you tell the Emperor we need the more silks and threads? Yeah, and the money. So off went the dying Prime Minister to tell the Emperor, who in turn sent all his brainy ministers to view the magic cloth. Even the Minister for Education, who was supposed to be <laughs> the cleverest of the lot, told the Emperor what he wanted to hear, that the invisible cloth was the finest in the world. It was what is known in the cabinet as collective responsibility. Finally, the emperor himself <laughs> decided to view the cloth. Together with his entourage, he entered the weaving room. The wolf and the fox had rehearsed their sales pitch. Observe how light this cloth is said the wolf, holding up an imaginary pair of trousers. Yes, yes, I suppose, yes. And look at this then. The cut of the jacket. Isn't it great altogether, altogether, said the fox, apparently holding a jacket. Oh, yes, it's really magnificent, said the emperor, determined not to seem a fool in front of everybody. Do you use one of them wrapped up? No, no. I'll put them on at once and parade them before the whole of Islington. And flinging off his old clothes, he pulled on his invisible trousers and jacket, admiring himself in front of the mirror. Everybody clapped and cheered the emperor. What beautiful clothes! Such lovely colors! Such weaving! Such hemming! Down the stairs and into the street went the delighted emperor, parading himself in front of the good folk of Islington who cheered and cheered. I love you, Dolly. I say. One little boy was watching from his father's shoulders. Look, Dad! He's as bare as a baboon's bum! Silence fell over the gathering. The kid's right. The Emperor's nude. Someone's half inch his whistle. He's naked. He's got shortcomings. So, with their cruel cockney humor ringing in his ears, the proud Emperor marched bravely on toward the Essex Road. Thank heaven I kept the receipt. There's more wolves and more witches and more giants here next.